Hello everyone, and welcome back to an introduction to Programming Remastered. In today's episode, we are going to be covering one of the most important topics in programming, and one that is applicable to any program that you are going to write. That topic is variables. To begin, what exactly is a variable? A variable is simply something that can store information that you as the programmer are able to reference and manipulate at will. It's easy to think of variables like cardboard boxes. Cardboard boxes are just meant to store things, and you can change out, replace, or modify whatever it is that you are storing. Variables act similarly. Each variable has a type, a name, and a piece of data that is stored within it. More accurately, each variable acts as a pointer to a piece of data, but functionally, it's easier to think of variables as containing that data for now. The name of the variable is very simple, as it is simply the label that you use to refer to the variable and its data in your program. The type of the variable has a lot more going on. There are many different types of variables that a programmer is able to make use of in their program. In this video, we will simply be covering primitive variables, which include integers, booleans, floats, doubles, strings, and chars. These are known as primitive variables as they are simple pieces of data, as well as that they are immutable. Mutability versus immutability is something that we will get into during the future arrays and lists video, but for now, know that these data types are classified as immutable. Let's begin with the integer. An integer, or int for short, is a variable type that is as simple as it sounds a variable that contains one integer value. This includes all whole numbers from negative 2,147,483,648 to positive 2,147,483,648. Keep in mind that, as I said, integers can only store whole numbers, and thus integer variables cannot and will not store any decimal values. Now, you might ask, what if I want to create a variable that does store decimal values? Well, this is where the float and the double comes into play. Both of these variable types are floating point data types, which just means that they can store numbers with decimal values. The float and the double are very similar, but they do have one main difference in that the double can store numbers with precision up to 64 bit whereas the float can only store numbers with precision up to 32-bit. Essentially, the double can store more decimal places than a float, so your choice between the two will come down to how precise you want your variable to be. Next up, we have booleans. A boolean simply stores either true or false. That's it. If you would like to store anything else in your variable, you should definitely not be using a boolean. Now, Keep in mind that true and false are booleans, and are separate from a string containing the word true, or one that contains the word false. The difference between these is very similar to the difference between integers and strings that appear to be integers. Although the difference may not seem so massive, your program will not work if you mix these up. Booleans are extraordinarily useful when it comes to conditional statements, which we will cover in a future video. Up next, let's go over strings. We've already talked a lot about strings in our previous video, so be sure to check that out if you want to catch up. Essentially, a string contains letters, words, or sentences, or even numbers, though these numbers won't act as actual numbers when it comes to arithmetic, as they are a string value. Strings are useful for displaying text and storing input information. Strings can also be concatenated together to form combinations of string variables and pre-written strings. Let's say, for example, you have the user's name stored in a variable called name. To print out their name in a more visually appealing way than just printing only the name out, you can use concatenation. The most simple way to do this would be to print your name is plus name plus a period. This would print out what you see on the screen now. Strings and concatenation are extraordinarily important when it comes to outputting information, 
as well as tracking down bugs in your program. Finally, we have char variables. Char stands for character, and just as the name suggests, they can each hold one character. This is most useful when a programmer wants to do something such as reading one button press or one character in a string. A concrete example of this is if you are programming a game and you want to know what button a user presses and have the game react accordingly, be it the spacebar causing the character on screen to jump or the D key causing the character to move rightward. Now, keep in mind that the char doesn't exist in every programming language. As, for example, in Python, there are no char variables. You would just use a string variable that contains only one character. Now, why exactly are variables so useful? Well, being able to store information in a manner that allows you to easily reference it later is essential for any good program. Generally, you're going to want to have access to some information in multiple sections of your code, and in this case, a variable is best suited. Furthermore, the variable allows you to edit your program easier. Let's say, for example, you are creating a game that involves a character moving. When you click the right arrow, you want your character to move to the right, and when you click the left arrow, you want your character to move to the left. To do this, you would add or subtract some value from the character's x-coordinate when you click these buttons. That value would represent the character's speed. If you hard code in the value that you want for the speed, and it turns out that this value is too much or too little, then you would have to go to each instance where you use this value and rewrite it with a new value. However, if you instead used a variable called speed, you could just change the value that you initialized the variable to, and that would change it everywhere else in the code that you use it. Furthermore, if you expect the character's speed to change throughout the game, say if they level up or some other event happens, then using a variable is best as you can easily change the value of the variable as the code is run. That does it for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss the next video in the series as well as the other videos that we have been making and putting out. Thanks for watching.